Hello students, in this video we are going to study about collision theory in which you will see what are effective collisions and also collision frequency. So let's start with the postulates of collision theory. Okay, so collision theory states that a chemical reaction takes place due to collision among the reactant molecules. That means what happens in a reactant in a reaction that the molecules of reactants come together and they collide with each other and because of this collision the product is formed. Just see here the reactants A, B and C are colliding and because of this collision the product is formed. So according to the collision theory the basic funda be, uh, behind any chemical reaction is the collision between the molecules of reactant. Let's say if the in a reaction A, B and C the th three reactants are reacting to form product let's say P. In this case what is happening that the, in the molecules of these three reactants are colliding each other, with each other and because of this collision the product is being formed. So obviously if the reaction takes place due to the collision between the molecules so the rate of reaction will also somehow depend on these collisions and according to the collision theory the rate of reaction depends upon number of effective collisions among the, the, the reactant molecule now there are special type of collisions effective collisions what are these effective collisions actually what happens that not all the collisions are able to produce products only certain type of collisions which satisfy some criteria are able to produce products and those are known as effective collisions and now let's study about these effective collisions in, in detail what are these effective collisions for being an effective collision the collision between the molecules must produce the minimum energy required to, to cross the energy barrier between the reactant and product let's say it again the collision between the molecules must produce the minimum energy required to cross the energy barrier between the reactant and product. Now what is this energy barrier? This is known as activation energy. We know very well that for every reaction to take place we require a minimum amount of energy. A minimum amount of energy is to be supplied to the reactant so that the reaction takes place and this minimum amount of energy is known as yes activation energy we must provide this activation energy to the reactants so that they cross this energy barrier and they convert into product so the we know from where does the energy comes yes it comes from collision the reactant molecules collide and then they get energy which is required for the uh, process of reaction so if the reaction is to take place the collision between the reactants must produce the energy which is equal to or greater than the activation energy and only then it can be converted into product. So the collisions between the reactants must produce this minimum amount of energy which is known as activation energy so that the reaction can take place. So not all the reaction all the collisions are effective but only those collisions which produce a minimum amount of energy equal to activation energy so that the reaction takes place. So this is the first criteria for a collision being effective. For being effective collision the collision must produce the minimum amount of energy which is equal to activation energy or maybe greater than this. Okay. And the next criteria is that the colliding molecules must have proper orientation at the time of collision. Now what is this concept of orientation? Let me explain this to you with an hypothetical example. Uh, let's say in a reaction A2 a reactant is reacting with B2. A B2 that is a diatomic molecule of B and diatomic molecule of A. These two diatomic reactants are reacting to form some product let's say 2AB. Now what is happening in this that there are two chances there are two possible orientations in which these two uh, reactants can collide with each other. The one is this orientation A and A these two collide with 
this to form yes a b and a b this is the correct orientation in which these molecules must collide in order to form product if they want to product for form product they must collide in this way this is the correct orientation in which they will collide and it, the collision will result in formation of product okay there can be another way in which they collide and this let's say if they collide in this way no reaction will take place this is not the correct orientation for the molecules to react so not only uh, the energy barrier the minimum energy re required is the only criteria for the collision being effective but the another thing is orientation the molecules of reactants must collide in proper orientation and uh, only after the collision in proper orientation with proper amount of energy release the reaction can take place let's see another example in this way a reactant to uh, three reactants say a b and c are colliding to form there is a reactant a and another reactant a bi molecular reactant b and c these are colliding to form a new product a b and c is being displaced so this is the the first one this is the correct orientation for the collision and if the orientation is like this because we know uh, we have to uh, displace some the molecule c from the reaction so the collision must be in this orientation and not this this is not the correct orientation okay the next is collision frequency now what is collision frequency collision frequency is the number of collisions taking place per second per unit volume of the reaction mixture we know that reactants are continuously colliding with each other some of the collisions which are effective which are of proper energy and proper orientation are able to form products and some are not but the number of collisions taking per second per unit volume of the mixture reactant mixture is known as collision frequency and this is represented by z and the formula is yes and the root 8 rt upon pi m where r is the universal rate constant t is the absolute temperature m is the molar mass so what does we get from what do we get from this expression that is z is directly proportional to the absolute temperature the collision frequency depends on directly depends on it is directly proportional to the absolute temperature so most of the time what we see as we increase the temperature the number of collisions between the molecules of reactants gets increased and because of which there are greater chances for increasing rate of reaction so the collision frequency is directly proportional to the square root of the absolute temperature actually it is proportional to the square root of the of the tem temperature this is directly proportional to the square root of the temperature so this was the idea about collision theory and this is a very important theory i hope all the things were clear to you thank you let me finish with this